Today I'm using Molly's Creature Creator Sitting Down Mold. This comes in a set with a couple of tutorials and a basic user guide. I also have the brand new Molly's Creature Creator Feet. This one is made for the sitting down mold and again will come with a tutorial. We're going to start by baking the cake. Grease the mold thoroughly with butter or margarine. Now sprinkle over a small amount of flour in order to prevent the cake batter from sticking. Here I have made my classic Victoria sponge recipe which makes the perfect amount for these moulds. I shall leave a link to that for you in the description below this video. You want to place this in the oven at 170 degrees centigrade for approximately 50 minutes. When the cake is baked and whilst it is still warm, carefully trim off the top. Not much of this cake will do if you have followed the recipe correctly. I then simply turning, turn it out onto a cooling rack and allow the cake to completely cool before we start decorating. Once the cakes have cooled, you need to add a filling of your choice. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I am not adding a thick layer of filling, but you can add as much as you want. For this particular buttercream recipe, again, I will leave a link for that for you in the description below this video. Simply fill the centre, place the two halves together and then crumb coat the whole of the cake. Crumb coating is just a process where we cover the outer side of the cake. This then acts like a glue when we add fondant, but it will also protect your sponge from the air. You can either use buttercream or ganache. Now we want to set up our Creature Creator feet. So here I have covered a 12 inch round cake drum with some fondant and I gently push the feet down. This is just to leave an embossed effect where I can cut the fondant away. Using a circle cutter where the feet went, simply cut this away and then there is an adhesive pad that sticks to the base of each foot. This pad wants to directly touch that cake drum. Simply place the pad on each foot and put the Creature Creator back into place. Inside the Creature Creator Fit, you will see lots of support there that actually physically goes through the cake. I'm just going to add a small amount of buttercream to the base of my cake and then place it directly in there. This has been in the fridge so that I can physically handle it very easily. Now using some of my leftover buttercream, simply fill any gaps that there may be around the base. I didn't find many. This cake fits in absolutely beautifully with these stands. In order to give our baby dragon a little tummy, start by applying some cooled down boiled water to the actual feet. And then you simply want some either modeling chocolate or sugar paste. Start by rolling this into a ball, place it directly onto your cake and using your hands, Simply smooth this into a tummy-like shape. To create more definition at the top of the dragon's legs, simply add two ball shapes of fondant the same size. Gently drape this down over the creature creator feet so half of it is on the cake and half of it is on actually the creature creator feet stand and simply smooth out and shape with your hands. Remember, this is all being covered with fondant, so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. To add more definition to the face, I start with two ball shapes, roll these between my hands and then simply shape them. I squish them down slightly and I want them larger at one end than the other. Using both of my hands, I place them directly onto the cake. Taking another piece of fondant, which I have shaped using my hands, simply place this in between both of those balls you've just added to the cake and smooth it out with your fingers. This is going to be where the mouth goes. 
Taking a sharp knife, you want to cut an indentation for the mouth and using your hands, shape this until you have got the shape you are happy with. Taking a small amount of black fondant, I now simply fill in the centre of the mouth. Now we're going to start covering our dragon with fondant. Start by placing the colour of your choice over the dragon's tummy and then simply cut freehand just around the sugar paste or modelling chocolate that you have placed underneath there. Then taking a cocktail stick, simply place some indentations just across the baby dragon's tummy. In order to cover the cape with that amazing dragon skin, I am using the Katie Sue Dragon Skin Mould. Just look at all of that detail. We will be using what's called a panelling technique. I find to use these moulds, it's very easy if you just add a small amount of Trex vegetable fat first, sprinkle on some a light sprinkling of icing sugar, and then simply apply the rolled out fondant, which you can see here. It will then remove from the mould beautifully before we apply this to the cake. I start by covering the right foot of the dragon and the leg with some cooled down boiled water. Then taking the fondant, I simply wrap this over the largest area I possibly can and cut off any excess in a neat way. Because when I make another panel, it just means I can apply that to the cake. And if you do it and take your time, because of the design that is on this, it will look flawless and it'll be very hard to see where your panels actually meet. Here you can see me repeat that process but at a much better camera angle so that you actually understand what you need to do. Now I've done this for all of the sections of this cake and I'm going to narrow it down and speed it all up for you. You'll also notice a few indentations in the cake, that's where I've chosen to use a cocktail stick and I've just added some indentations in there just to give the cake a little bit more definition. So a very simple technique, simply cover the front and the back and when it comes to the face, add the fondant and feel for the mouth before cutting away the excess with a sharp knife, being very careful not to damage that shape. Now in order to add the hands to our baby dragon cake, simply roll out a cone shape, use some cool down boiled water or edible glue, apply this directly to the side of the cake, try to keep them symmetrical, and then I just use a cocktail stick to place an indentation in there and give him a little thumbs up. Using a number 61 piping tip, I then go over the arm and place in some indentations. If you don't have one of these tips just have a look at the ends of all your piping nozzles you have in your collection and see if there is something that will just give it a little bit more texture. For your baby dragon's nostril simply roll out a ball and using a balling tool add an indentation directly to the centre. Again sticking to simple shapes for his feet I start with a sausage shape just to cover up the creature creator feet. I then take a simple ball of fondant and place this directly on the front. Placing three indentations in there with a cocktail stick and finally using the 61 piping nozzle just to add a bit more dragon-like skin to both that sausage shape that goes around the base and the foot placed on the front. For the dragon's tail, I've rolled out this very large cone shape in fondant, which you can see when placed on there looks and works beautifully. But you're going to need a cake dowel to hold this in place. Simply place it into the centre of the fondant and then at an angle directly into the cake. Again, using the number 61 piping nozzle, I then cover this with indentations. Using a darker purple, I now start by rolling out simple ball shapes in my hand. Squeeze these together and then just pinch them at the top. These will make very thin, small triangles. I'm now going to place these all down the dragon's back, 
and along his tail. It's a very, very simple technique, but as you can see, it's extremely effective. And just as I turn the dragon around here, you can just see the sort of effect that you're aiming to achieve. For the dragon's horns, I simply roll out a cone shape and stick directly on top of the cake. In order to make the dragon's wings, I need to support them with some florist wire, which we use in sugar work. So here I have an 18 gorge on the outside, a posy pick to place it directly into the cake, and for the central pieces, I'm just using a 24 gorge wire. I will speed this up for you, but it's simply a case of bending the wire to the desired shapes, adding the other pieces of wire on there and supporting them in place with some florist tape and then we will be adding the sugar work. The wings need to be made from modelling paste. Simply take one level teaspoon of tylo powder and knead it into 250 gram of fondant the colour of your choice. Here I have already made one of the wings. Start by sprinkling some icing sugar over your surface and rolling out your modelling paste. You want it to be relatively thin, but not too thin. You then want to place the structure that you have just made from florist wire directly on top of the modelling paste and push in gently so it leaves a small indentation. Add some edible glue and then place this back on there so it's stuck on beautifully. Now start rolling some sausage shapes and place this directly over the florist wire. This will just add a little bit more definition. Then simply add on top of that another piece of modelling paste, again very thin, with plenty of edible glue and cut away. Now I use a sharp knife to cut along the outside, but I actually use a circle cutter to help get those domes like shapes just on the inner side of the actual wing. You can always neaten this up with your sharp knife. Simply allow these to set overnight. Here I am just adding a little matte finish with an edible dust just to give it a little bit more of colour. I'm only adding it to certain parts of the wing. This is not a necessity, so if you don't have any edible dusts, don't worry about it. In order to add the teeth, simply take a very small piece of white fondant, roll it into a ball shape, make it more of a triangular shape using your hands, and then stick directly on there with some edible glue. For the eyes, simply roll out two small balls of white fondant and glue them directly onto the cake and shape with your hands by pushing them into place. Using a colour of your choice, simply repeat this process but add the smaller ball directly to the centre of the larger white one. This one wants to be more near the nose rather than bang in the middle with a rim all the way around. Taking some black fondant, now add the pupil. Taking a small sausage shape, add a couple of eyebrows and then finally using a small amount of white fondant, you want to place one dot on each eye. All we need to do now is add the wings. Now if you gently place these into your cake, make sure they are completely set first. And then I use a small amount of edible glue to actually attach it onto the cake. But also whilst that edible glue is setting, you can place a cocktail stick just underneath part of the wing just to support it whilst it dries. You could, if you wanted to, if you are concerned about them falling off, use a lollipop stick instead because the lollipop stick can stop inside the cake. It can be just underneath the wing covered with a little bit of fondant. Just make sure you inform your customer that you have actually used this so that they know to remove them. And there we have it. How cute does he look? Now, it's very easy to make, but this one is a little time consuming. So just bear that in mind. You've got all these beautiful features. You've done it all yourself. Your edible wings, because they are classed as edible, just because it's just sugar. That lovely 
dragon skin texture and well it's just super cute it's super easy and it's all thanks to the molly's creature creator theme happy baking guys and i will be back soon with a lot more new completely free content